Right, welcome back to this week's game hunt. And I decided to uh, hit Ilford today. I was on the way home from work, so I thought, let me quickly check it out. I got out early, so sneaked in a quick game hunt. Big up the busker there at Ilford. Sounding good. But as good as you were, mate, I think it's time to go inside and check out what I really came for. Now, for one of my locals, Ilford has always been a branch I really, really like. It's always had some good stuff. The stock is always rotating there. And today is no exception. As you can see, straight away we walk in, hit with some killer retro stuff here, some really great titles on your Mega Drive, your Saturns, and pretty much every console you can think back from them kind of errors. I love that Namco um, fight stick there. Was that for the PlayStation 1 or the 3? Oh, I can't remember, but it's nice. I like the color scheme. Now, this is unusual. Boxed brand new Xbox 360 control pads in CEX. Not sure where they've come from. But the strange thing about that is the price of the second hand one on this electric Volt Green is 65 but yeah, a brand new one is 52. You got a lovely blue one there as well at 50. Not, I'm, I'm completely confused. What's happened there? Now, I always have a look at these kind of sections, the Game Boys, the Game Boy Advances and stuff like that, although I don't actively collect for those sort of things. Now, that is crazy. Those PS2 to HDMI converters... They are like three or four pound on AliExpress and similar websites. And they are the exact same item that CEX are selling to you for 18 pound. So yeah, not good, not good with that one. Cracking little Harvest Moon um, collector's edition here on the PS4. Not my cup of tea, not my sort of game, and I wouldn't have anywhere to display it either, but it's a really cool item. Now, who remembers during the first ever lockdown in 2020? Those things were absolute gold dust, the uh, PlayStation moves. And you got the PS VR 2 here, a system that Sony seemed to have given up on already. I'm really glad I didn't spend uh, a ton of my vouchers on purchasing that, as at one stage I was close to having £400 in vouchers. And I was really close to buying it. I'm really glad I didn't as, um, yeah, it's not being supported. Well, not enough anyway. Nice little uh, GameCube there hiding behind the sign. I think that's more likely because it looked like it was yellowing a bit. Now, this looks really strange. Took all the PS5s and you can see how, I, I mean, I don't like the PS5 aesthetically. I think it looks terrible. And uh, up there looks like some sort of seashell thing from Demolition Man. I don't know. When you've got them all in a row like that. It looks, it looks strange. Nice SP there. 90 pound note. I'll give that a miss. I uh, wouldn't mind having one in the collection to be honest with you. But... In all honesty, I'm looking for one at the right price. Now that's a really cool switch there. I do love that design. Not a fan of the franchise, but nevertheless, it looks nice. Now the Wii U, that's a really underrated console. Um, I've mentioned in some of my other videos and vlogs that I've managed to pick up the white one recently for like £40 and I'm really enjoying collecting for it. So straight on to the Nintendo Wii section. Some 
decent stuff here today. Now, as it, it seems to be common practice now in a lot of the uh, CEXs that I visit, when they don't have many Wii U games in stock, they will just uh, lumber them in with the Wii stuff. Uh, and understandably so, if you've only got about seven, eight games for the particular system, um, I see why they do it. And they stand out enough uh, for you to be able to notice what you're looking for anyway. So it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't make things difficult when you're looking for Wii U games. Um, one thing I do love about the Wii U, the blue, it pops amazingly when it's on display. Now, I'll put that Spyro down. Um, I regret that. Got a bit of a uh, buyer's regret on that one. I think I might have to go back and buy it. I was summoning an R in. I wasn't sure if I had it in the collection. And when I got home, uh, yeah, I realised I didn't. Nice to see a fairly solid um, PSP collection there. In a teeny weeny PS Vita section. Same with the GameCube, in all honesty. Another one you don't really see too many of. And when you do see the games, a lot of the CEXs tend to keep them uh, behind the displays, in the cabinets, that sort of thing. Now, I almost bought this today. I put it aside. When I got to the counter, I was double checking. And um, yeah, the copy was, um, it was rough to say the least. It looked like um, it had a few dirty marks on it. Really stains, should I say. And at £1.50, I'm quite happy to find that in another branch of CEX down the line. It's a pretty common game, so it's not going to be difficult to find. Oops, excuse the wobble there. Now, one thing I like about the Ilford branch is that they have a great 360 section. Some branches are cutting down on uh, the, that generation, PS3, Xbox 360. Ilford is not one of them, and that's great news for me, as I'm collecting on the 360 actively right now and having a great time whilst doing so. So many games that I had in my collection at one point, I'm trying to get back into the collection. Um, and also, I'm discovering loads and loads of games that, um, even though I was an avid, I would say, Xbox fanboy, uh, I'm finding games that I wasn't aware were even, you know, released. And it's a brilliant time to collect for the system because it's so cheap. And in all honesty, similarly with the Xbox One titles, with the introduction of Game Pass, I think a lot of shops were struggling to get rid of their physical media for the Xbox One. With that in mind, you'll see Xbox One games tend to be cheaper than PS4 stuff. So I've got both. So I do tend to lean towards buying uh, the Xbox stuff if I'm looking to purchase a particular game physically. Because nine times out of 10, I'm gonna be saving four or five pound. So here we look, the generation of Doom, in my opinion, PS5. Evil West has gone down to £15 now. A shout out to anyone that wants to try that game, it's on Game Pass now on the Xbox. And that Gungrave there for £8 as well, really good game. I was playing that recently on the PlayStation uh, Plus and um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Sonic Generations, I've got that on the Switch. I need to get back on that. Now, Scars, um, I'm not too sure about that game. It looked cheap, so for a PS5 game I had a look, but it doesn't look like it's my cup of tea. Now, I'm always on the lookout for Switch games. I love my Switch, and um, as I've said in a lot of my videos, you go to the CEXs, you do tend to see the mainstream stuff, 
but it's always worth looking out for just in case you get those um, titles that you're not that familiar with like this one for example now this cover is brilliant haven't seen this one out in a while before um, at 22 pound no um, I've got the game on other platforms so I didn't pick it up as I don't think I'd be, I'd be displaying it per se my switch collection is um, not on display so for that reason I don't think it was worth me picking that one up great little cover though great little cover So unfortunately, nothing really on the Switch today. Um, I think I'm going to have to take my Switch purchasing habits over to um, websites like PlayAsia, uh, Strictly Limited and Limited Run, them sort of things now, in order to get my physical fix for the system. similar case with the ps4 stuff you do tend to see the usual suspects everywhere and that's not one of them crayola scoot and um yeah i'll put that back swiftly once i realized what i was looking at in time there for £10. I was playing that on the PlayStation Network not too long ago. Got pretty far into it. Um, it's rough around the edges. Um, I didn't think it was a great game. Now that one, The Nightmares or, or something, can't recall. Never seen that one out actually. That was nice to see. Killer Frequency there. Definitely on my wish list. I'm hoping it goes down ever so slightly at some point. Neverwinter Nights there. Another game, personally, I've not heard of that one. So there was one or two games in the uh, PS4 sections um, that I've not seen before. Let me know in the comments of any of the ones that I've mentioned you've played, whether or not I should be picking these games up as, yeah, they really would have been a stab in the dark for me to be taking them home. Now straight on to one of the sections I absolutely love looking at, and that's your PS2. One of my favorite eras of gaming. Um, there's no childhood nostalgia with the PS2 due to my age, but it was definitely one of those times that, um, you know, we as teenagers, or in our early 20s, we was having a lot of fun playing this um, in the evenings. Uh, sessions, shall we say. Ah, now I've been looking for this game for ages on physical. Let's check this uh, copy out and see if it's in good condition. And I'm not going to try and pronounce its name either. Lollipop Chainsaw there on the PS3. That game is rising in price rapidly. I had it on the 360, sold it a while back. Still as regret. Big shout to the Retro Giant in Romford. They hooked me up with a lovely um, PS3 copy of that. Absolutely mint and around about £10 cheaper than what CEX are currently selling it. So big up the Retro Giant. If you're in and around the area... It's worth checking them out. Romford Shop, and they also have a secondary shop in Brentwood.
The Godfather 2, I've never played that despite how much I really enjoyed the original. I'm going to have to look into that one a bit more. Right, so let's check out the OG Xbox. As I recently just uh, replaced my old OG Xbox with a crystal one that I picked up at the London Gaming Market for a lovely price of £50. Really happy with that. So now um, I feel inspired a lot more to collect for the system. Anyway, here's today's pickups. I think I've done pretty well today. So there you go guys, that's the Ilford branch once again. It's going to be one of the branches that I'll probably do a video on every now and then. And that's simply because it's one of my local branches, I can get to it really easy. And it's an added bonus, so I really think it's a good branch. So yeah, we'll be seeing Ilford fairly often on the vlogs. However, I'm still going to be travelling all around the London areas and surrounding to do some more CEX videos and various other game shops. So keep it locked for that. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please take the time to consider subscribing to the channel. It's a massive help. And I'll see you on the next one.